Hi, Andy Evans here, Podcast 51, uh, Aigo Guitars. Um, okay, I'll give you a quick update on what I've been up to. Um, the, the last podcast I was talking about um, uh, problems with rousing and clearing out the, um, the dust and how to speed up rousing. And I was talking about making um, a template that sits off the guitar 25mm. Uh, I've actually made one. It sits off the guitar 20 mil, and it works a treat. It's uh, because it's off the guitar and the space underneath, all the debris flies out of the sides. Um, I was actually watching something on the internet about um, CNC machines and a guy talking about um, how they're a lot better than doing things by hand and things like that. And obviously they are a lot faster. And he was saying every guitar you've got to put a centre line on it and uh, mark everything out. And I was thinking, well, that's not correct you know because uh, unless you're making it if you make a custom one-off build then yes you do a centre line and you have to mark everything out um, if you're doing a run of the same guitars you can you can figure something out where you have uh, if you're doing your router from the if you're doing your routing from the top with a handheld router not a pin router using a handheld router you can create some sort of some sort of locating pin on the template so you don't have to draw centre lines it should just look, you drill a couple of holes on the first um, pattern and the next patterns all locate in those holes and it should be all central. Um, so I, was, I thought I'd, I'd give it a go trying to make a template like that for my CDC 1.5 guitars. Um, I'll show you what I've come up with. Um, it's not that pretty at the moment. Come on, get closer. Um, as you can see. Uh, it's got uh, a little bit that comes out there, so you can do the two two humbuckers. I use a guide on my router, so these are four mil bigger than what they should be. But by the time you've used the guide and the router, they're the correct size. And what I've done, I don't know if you can see, uh, instead of locating pills, I've just used those little right angle uh, brackets you see here. Here, I've put four of them on. And what that does, once you've cut your guitar out and routed it or got this edge nice and correct, it's just plonks on. It's a nice tight fit. Plonks on the top of the guitar. Can't move. Uh, and that way, you just route this out. Route your, your pickup out there. Then you put this little piece in there, this insert. Do your neck slot. Um, do all your controls. Do your bridge, uh, the holes for the, the post for the bridge. And that way, you don't have to you don't have to draw anything out on the guitar. You know, you just do your uh, shape of the guitar, plonk that on top, right? And as I say, I put some a bit of um, MDF underneath, um, so all the debris shoots out the side here, and because this is open, it flies out. So it's pretty good. I'm quite impressed. I've used it once, and uh, I'm quite impressed with it. I've used MDF. You know, I don't normally use MDF because it's not very good. A good trick for MDF if you want to make it a bit tougher is put super glue around the, the sides or paint it with a polyester resin or epoxy and that way it'll last a lot longer. It's, it's very easy to make patterns out of, you know. So that's one thing I've been up to. Uh, the other thing I've been up to is I actually put some strings on the TVC15 uh, and used the old parts of the Epiphone, the old bridge. And I just banged it together just so I can play it. So it plays okay. I haven't uh, stuck any, um, I haven't wired it up for uh, pickups yet, but it plays okay. I just wanted something I could uh, have a little strum with, you know, at home. And it sustains forever. It's, the, it's like a 10 second sustain on one note. It's quite impressed. And the other thing I've done, I've bought some lovely, curly, torrified maple from Canada. Um, Okay, so that's going to be for my Les Paul. I'm going to do a semi hollow body Les Paul mahogany back carved um, torrified maple front. So I'm going to cut this in half, book match it. What actually surprised me, I'm looking for the Les, Les Paul pattern. I'm pretty sure um, Les Paul just copied an acoustic guitar like this. And then they just made this cutaway because that, if you turn that over like that, it's like it fits on this template exactly. And that's what they've done. They've uh, they've copied an acoustic, Gibson copied an acoustic, and they just.
done this little cutaway thing out here. So I don't know what acoustic they copied, <laughs> but I don't know if you've been reading uh, lately in the news that they're suing people for copying them. Uh, hopefully they copied one of their own acoustics. Um, so, this is going to get cut in half, it's going to get um, book matched. That, that shape there will fit into, into there, so that's not a problem. Uh, I'm going to cut it in half, I might actually cut, cut about 10 mil off and then cut it in half and then I've got another top for something else, you know. So I've got two of those, so out of that I'll get two tops, three tops maybe. Should we do the one? just as nice. I should have actually got it quarter sawn. Quarter sawn would be stunning. I'll put some alcohol on so you can see what's going on. Get some alcohol on there. Can't really see the grain there but let me bang that on. Let's have a look. Okay. So curly maple, Canada. Can you see oh you can't see it really. Yeah you can. Okay. So that's uh, quarter sawn there. I'd love to have a piece like that for the next but I don't have it a piece wide enough. So, by the time I got it shipped over and all that from Canada and I had to pay the, um, the TVA tax in French, they charge you for TVA 20% on it, all the imports, and they actually charge, charge for the whole package including the shipping from the USA. So it, it became a really expensive piece of wood, this is only about this long, it was about that wide, 40 mil deep, but it, I could have bought a guitar with the price of the wood, so I've been really careful about how I've cut it up and so I can make as many guitars out of it as I can. I can make six fingerboards, two necks and two or three fronts for guitar. It was over 300 euro, well it's just under 300 euro. So if I get all that out of it, if I get six fingerboard, uh, six fingerboards, two necks, three guitar fronts, I'll be quite happy. Um, and also, this is what was left when I cut the, uh, the, Les Paul, the two Les Pauls out. To an acoustic shape and this is quarter sawn on the edges here. I don't know if you can see that grain, it's absolutely stunning. It's like a violin, you know, neck of a violin. So I'm going to glue that together today and that's going to be some type of acoustic or semi-acoustic or something. Uh, as I say it's expensive wood so I won't be so I won't be wasting any of it, won't be getting thrown in the bin. Alright, thanks for thanks for watching this podcast. Um, it's been a while. The other two three guitars are getting sprayed up the green one. Uh, someone, somebody commented uh, on my um, on my YouTube channel that it looked like a, something from out of a swamp or something. <laughs> um, but it's looking a lot nicer now. It's got nice. Um, he said he liked it though, but it's looking a lot nicer now. It's got a um, nice urethane gloss finish on it on top of the polyurethane. Uh, it's got a U, it's got a UV uh, protection in it, the lacquer I use because I use food cooling and stains. And really, you need a UV protected lacquer on top of that, which is, I'm using a little bit uh, acrylic in all the um, Alright, so the next podcast, I'll show you those. They're on the way, they're nearly finished. Thanks for watching, I can't think of anything else. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you like what you see, press the subscribe button, and uh, thanks a lot. See you next time.